at 6.30, we'll get this show on the road. Uh, yeah. oh, 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 this is the old one. That's on now. Oh, she was great. This one's great. Well, don't be recording. How are you? All right. Good evening. You're also up to end down. Here, I'm going to do All right. Good evening. Suffrage Town Council of the whole meeting Thursday, July 23rd, 2020, at 6.30 p.m., being held here in the community room at the police department. It's called to work. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020, order suspended certain provisions of the open meeting law. General Law Chapter 38, Section 18, the Governor's March 15, 2020, order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting at the Council of the Whole is being conducted via in person of the public body as well as remote participation. Every effort will be made to ensure that the public can accurately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to do this meeting may do so by the most information noted below. We will post directly to the meeting on the town's website at www.ci.suffrage.ma.us as soon as we're able to. All a roll call vote is required for any votes taken under this order. I'd like to thank uh, for the record that the meeting is also being recorded by Suffrage Cable Access. So thank you for being here tonight. So I'll call the meeting to order. Please rise to the pleasure of the meeting. Pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call now, Secretary. Councilor Adams. Present. Councilor Katrona. Present. Councilor Daniel. Present. Councilor Dow. Present. Councilor Joanne. Present. Councilor Lago. Present. Councilor Marchetti. Councilor Ryan. Absent at this time, she comes in late. There she is. Not right there. Right. And present. Well, present. What do I okay. All members present. Item four. Review of the proposed policy as recommended by the Director of Inspections Health and Inspection Department. Stay at home policy for employees who return from travel to a location that poses a high risk of COVID 19 infection and take any action on the adoption of the same. So, the reason for this is obviously. <coughs> As we've moved through, through, uh, I'm sorry, moved through the COVID-19 situation, things change daily. As we know, the incidents, while they had declined in Massachusetts throughout the rest of the United States, the numbers are climbing. We have employees that have traveled and may travel outside of Massachusetts, and there's guidelines as to the return of any uh, of those people with strongly worded advisories the decision is uh, what do we want to do as a council to implement any policy as we are the policy making board of the town of Southbridge uh, on the recommendation of uh, either the uh, town manager as well as to any limitations or policy that we want to put in place for those employees that are returning to make sure that all other employees in the town are safe as well as our residents. Mm -hmm. So this was brought up uh, Monday night at the regular council meeting, and I think uh, if you remember, we said we'll have the inspections and uh, Mr. Conroy's, the acting town manager, take a look at it, and then if we had needed to call a special council meeting, we would to make sure we got something in place because we do know that there's an employee now currently in one of those um, areas that are on the list. So, what if any action do we want to take upon the recommendations of the inspections department or the health inspector? as well as economic like, resources. So that's where we are. There's a model policy there, and I think we'll go to Andy if you want to just touch base first as to what your thoughts are and uh, the policy that got drafted. Um, I came in. I'll, I'll step over here, can't we? I can while well, the mic comes right there so people can take it. Hey, good morning. Um, I came in Tuesday, and it's always morning in my world. Um, <laughs> it's always morning somewhere. I came in Tuesday and was told that the council had expressed a concern regarding people who travel be beyond the um, what Massachusetts has set as a non-quarantine zone. Massachusetts has set that anybody who travels outside of New England, New York, or New Jersey should quarantine. Um, I had done significant research for the Board of Health prior to this. Um, it remains an advisory. The state did not mandate this quarantine, it's an advisory. So um, 
based on the conversations that this board had on Monday night and the guidance of the acting town manager, uh, I drafted a mandated quarantine order or policy for the town of Southbridge, um, based it upon a couple of other towns that had done the same thing. Um, I brought this to the Board of Health prior to Monday, uh, last Thursday. The Board of Health hedged at doing the mandated for the town of Southbridge and specifically did not feel that they could put it on a particular employer if, unless they did it to the whole town. So the board chose to follow the guidance of the state and make it advisory or leave it advisory. Um, the reason for that would be that if we put it as a mandate for the town of Southbridge, the enforcement and follow-up would be impossible to accomplish. However, as an employer, I believe this council has the authority to put it on the employees that fall underneath them. So I bring you this guidance, this policy, proposed policy, as something that the council can consider. Um, I will inject that the language of the policy is appropriate to the Board of Health, except for things about the um, The family first coronavirus response. I do not know if we can put the requirement for the quarantine on the people um, because the family first coronavirus response employer paid leave says <coughs> generally the act provides that the covered employee must provide to all employees two weeks up to 80 hours of paid sick leave at the employer's regular rate of pay where the employee is unable to work because the employee is quarantined pursuant to federal, state, or local government order. This would be a local government action. So I would leave it to this council to decide if they want to keep it under the Family First Corona Act or, um, or if they want to put it back on the people, but that would be a legal question. I don't interpret legal. Um, beyond that, I think it's a solid policy. I think it's a good plan to protect public health. This disease travels with people, and if we can restrict people's travel or restrict people once they have traveled, then I think it is good for public health. Question, say Andy. Okay. Council Steves. I'm sure. Um, I actually called Springfield this afternoon. Um, I talked to them a little bit. Um, I know that in, in this covered Springfield policy board, but I know you refer to that too. Um, uh, I gave it to everybody, I don't know if you got my stuff, but there's a couple of things. Um, and anyway, so I talked to them a little bit, I was actually more concerned about how they enforce it as opposed to what the policy itself was per se. Um, and so I talked to them a little bit and they were coming in how, um, among other things, as she put it, if you have a policy that doesn't have any teeth, you might have a So I, that's one of the things that we need to consider, what, what do we do to enforce it? How do we how does somebody coming in that works here get handled? Obviously, need to be handled fairly. Um, and uh, what she was talking about, how I was specifically talking to one of their health nurses, um, and she was commenting on how, generally speaking, what they what they have seen is that they did have an issue with somebody coming in, walking around through their facility. They came to work after going after traveling over the. Uh, some someplace she didn't specify where, and she didn't, didn't, didn't obviously didn't identify who um, for a couple reasons. But they had this person wandering through the facility and actually turning up for work, and then somebody somebody did confront them, and they went home. There wasn't any there wasn't any but violence or anything like that. Um, so they didn't have to get arrested or anything. They just told them one or the other. Um, but so I guess that's one question I want to ask: How do we address that? How do we address that issue? Has has the board of health talked about that kind of a concern? I think if somebody shows up. If somebody actually does show up and. the Again, the board opted. The board opted to follow the advisory. Mm -hmm. So there is no mandate unless the person actually so signs or tests positive. Right. There is no mandate to quarantine them. So somebody going to a hot spot right now, I believe in Miami. Right now, somebody goes to Miami, comes back to work. It's advisory. We strongly advise they stay home in quarantine, but it's not mandatory. And again, the reason for that is because we don't have authority over yeah, the town of Southbridge employees, as this council does. We have authority over 
the town of Southbridge as a whole. Right. So any any restriction we put on the town of Southbridge employees would have to be town wide. And I understand that I, I, you mentioned it. Where where do things stand as far as the state law mandating quarantine? The state as I understand as I understand that there's a bill in front of the legislature, I think you brought it up in the last meeting. Um, I know there's a bill in front of the legislature about wearing masks. Um, three, 105, 310, uh, 316 or 318. But it's about wearing masks. I didn't find one about quarantine. I did. So if you have that number, I'd love to look at it. Yeah, if I could, I'm not sure exactly what the number is, but I, but I saw it in there. Okay. And, um, and I did say that if you are um, coming in from a place that had a positivity rate of five percent or higher for as a seven day average then you must quarantine and then it said the the last date of this legislative session i believe is july 31st i wasn't sure where it stood Hold on. do you have a follow-up question to karen's point because i know Dow is going to be that yeah I, to karen's point okay just to karen's point if we're doing five percent if say Council decides five percent. That's pretty much all the states throughout. I just looked it up on CDC website, and there is a lot. Unless you go to Montana, <laughs> you know. So I'd be very careful about what we, we plan on doing here. So, but that's all I had. Okay. Council, that question: As a board of health, you shouldn't protect other employee working with the person when you leave the state and come back. Never mind the law. As a board of health. It's more concern for employee working with other person was traveling to protect them from getting sick or spread that to their family. We it's not we are, out protection to protect those other employees. We are the board of health. It's public health. We do not specifically address individual health. So if we pick on the town, if we pick on the government and say the government has to quarantine, we are for the town of Southbridge. We would have to say the whole town of Southbridge has to quarantine. The enforcement on that would be beyond our capabilities, so we stuck with the advisory. Okay, so if you let that person back to work, yes. and he have the coronavirus, and now we shut in the whole town off completely because there's a paper transfers, walking, talking. No. So it's more concern from just put the put one person to be quarantined 14 days from shutting down the whole town off. Because if that person end up have a coronavirus, you have to close the facility. But you're asking me to put the restriction on one employer. That's like no, asking me. No, that's no. like asking me to go to Ocean State Job Lot and say you have to do it, but I'm not making the rest of the town do it. I, I can't pick on one because we have public health. Because we oversee the whole town, we cannot pick and choose who we're going to put the enforcement on or the restriction on. However, as council, as an employer. Mm -hmm. You have the right to put restrictions even to the point of harm to the town. So I know um, like Mafra Insurance has a restriction on if you write something nasty about Mafra Insurance, mm -hmm. they can fire you. So individual employers, the council, can put restrictions on their employees. Mm -hmm. The Board of Health has to act in the interest of the town or in their ability to enforce what they put on So. I can't pick and choose and say, government, you have to quarantine, but Ocean State, you don't have to quarantine. I would have to put it on the town as an entirety. Okay, either that person know the, the whole statewide saying you can't leave the state, and if you leave, you have to quarantine 14 days, and he left for one week, and then he come back, and he know the law is supposed to quarantine, and, he, he, and we let it go when nobody mention or nobody bring it up. And then he won another two weeks, and now again. So, my question is, how we're gonna protect those people working with them? They have health issue, family health issue. Uh, it's not about that specific person we're picking up on. We're protecting other employee in the town. Okay. As a board of health, I think right. you should be able to make a decision and provide it to us, and we enforce it. If this council chooses to pass this policy. I believe it would probably land on the, board of, on the Board of Health to enforce this policy, mm -hmm. but the policy has to come from the employer. Yes. I don't have authority over Ms. Karen Harmons. I can't because we don't have that particular. I would have to put it on the town. Yep. Thank you. 
So if you pass the policy, the Board of Health will enforce the policy that this employer puts on it. Thank you. Copy of your policy. I had, I had, I had, I had, I had, you may have my copy. Oh, okay. The uh, page one is my memo describing the situation. Page two is the policy. The rest of it is support documentation. Yeah. Um, two things. One is I wanted just to address a little bit of what Councilor Dow was saying. Is I think I'll just put this and clarify. Um, what Andy's talking about is the fact that he's, he's the problem is we're using the t town in two different senses here. The town is the town government, as in us and Karen and Andy and you know Kim and all the people that work in town hall and LPW, police department, fire department, that kind of stuff. And then you've got the town, which is the seventeen thousand people that live here. Okay. About town he's hall. What he's talking about is the town government employees specifically. And that's what I mean. That's what yeah. this policy would cover. That's what I yes. mean. So that's what I want to hold. I say okay. they hold. Okay, just to clarify, yeah. this yeah. is the point I made. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out is um, one of the things I noticed that when I was talking to Springfield is that their human resources enforces their, their policy because it is because it refers to their city employees as opposed to the Board of Health reinforcing, which as you pointed out, would be enforced to everybody in the community. Although granted, obviously, we overlap. Um, so what's your take on that element of it? And I guess that's maybe a question through also to Kim over there, since they have a health, they have a human resources department, whereas you're it for the most part. So, I don't know how we would go about doing that, and would it make sense to have Kim enforce a policy on other people that she is working with, essentially? Any regulation, I assume it's a question to me, any regulation or policy passed by this council would incorporate, the council would name the enforcing agent. That's what I think. So they would feel, the, the Board of Health passes laws. Right. And at times, I will call Shane and say, look, we're passing this law. I want you to be one of our enforcing agents on it. And with his consent, we name him as an enforcing agent. This council being the ones that are enacting this policy, right. have, I would assume, the same authority to say, this shall be enforced by right. the Board of Health, the Human Resources, or the police, or just the police, or just the Human Resources. The, the council in passing this should have the authority to name the enforcing agent. That's what I'm thinking. I'm just trying to figure out which way do we want to play with this. I mean, do we want to give it to Board of Health and Andy? Do we want to give it to, to Kim? I mean, thank Karen. If I could, I, I think it's going to have to go with the town manager as well. Because we, um, Kim sent something else to, out to Jack and I, and I think Andy, yeah, maybe I forgot to, um, to send it to you. But it talks about how the state is enforcing it. Okay. And when people are actually asking for their vacation time, it's going through human resources. Right. And that's where they're kind of getting, you know, where are you going? And they're not going to, if, if, if someone says that they're um, going to go to a place that's of high risk, they do it like at their, at, um, you know, when they decide that they're still going to go, they know they know what 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 is supposed to be enforced right. with the quarantine and everything. And uh, they can actually go one more step, saying, "Well, um, I'm not going to give you sick time when you get back. You're going to have to use some time to quarantine." But you knew and you knowingly went where you weren't supposed to go. Right. Exactly. Right. Well, so okay. there is even further. I don't. You know, I, I just wanted to mention it. It's up to you. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Outside. Yeah. Yeah, I have uh, two questions that maybe Andy can answer. One would be, the, do you know the average time of symptoms it takes to, to, for one individual to have symptoms after coming back from such a vacation being exposed? From, from exposure to just exposure symptoms? Just exposure to symptoms. Anywhere from 2 to 14 days, or the possibility that they remain asymptomatic and never get symptoms, but can still be positive and be a carrier. Okay, fine. And so... This would also apply to the schools, right? Uh, to our school. They are town employees. That is right? not a question for me. It would be a policy well, that you adopt. So if we're going to say town employees, the checks that the school get are from the town of Southbridge, so they're the employees as well. And I agree with the, as far as the HR is concerned, if, they, if this were to go through, the HR would just kind of handle it. And, Pass it where it needs to be passed. So that's all. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
Uh, so this model policy that was drafted does incur the actual contract. So if employee leaves, comes back, has the ability to work from home, they can work from home, correct? If they can. Huh? If, if they, they can. If their job allows them to work from home. Correct. Right. Well, given the fact that we operate a town government for four months with everybody working from home, there shouldn't be an excuse from anybody not to be able to work from home if they were quarantined. So they shouldn't have to be allowed to take sick time because if we're telling them, we just don't want you coming to the office, but you have the ability to work from home. Uh, I, I mean, am I reading that? Can you something? No, go ahead. Section 4 specifically states, and I, I borrowed this from Kathy, I believe. Um, stay at home requirement for employees who return from travel to high risk areas. When a town employee returns from travel to a high risk area, he or she is prohibited from entering the workplace for 14 days following the date of return. Stay at home period. Whether such employee is permitted, is be permitted, is he permitted to work this remotely during the stay at home period will be determined by his or her department head and will depend on whether the essential functions of his or her position can be performed remotely. Right. So it's so, a decision of their boss. So, right. and what I, my point is that even if it was the school department, pretty much all those employees have been working from home. Um, you know, and uh, any employees in the town hall, all have worked from home. Right. So, uh, could I, 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 I'm, sure, I'm sure this policy would have to be tweaked at some point, but it's uh, what do we want to put in place for right now? Um, Make sure that it's this is an ever-changing event that's going on. Right. So we want to make sure that we do it correctly and that no one of the rights of the employee is being violated. But we also want to protect all the employees of, of those that come back. So I mean, you have someone that has left, right? You didn't have a policy in place. Whatever policy you put in place, you want to make sure that it's a fair policy because. You know, it wasn't like, yes, there was guidance out there that said, hey, if you go, you come back, this is recommended, yeah. but now we're going to mandate something for somebody to say, hey, you're back, you know, you can't, you know, that, that's just my thought process. I'm not an attorney, but that's my, through fair labor and all that, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that whatever it is, it's judicious and, and make sure that it's all on a level playing field because, mm -hmm. you know, there's some language in if they normally went, on one of these policies, they know only went dead. That's a different story. But we're in a position right now where we're implementing a policy that says if you go, this will be ha what happens if you come back. Right. So you have to make sure that those people that are on that playing field right now, coming back, that is treated fairly. Okay, so, so I'll go, go to council. Right? Um, I guess just kind of a clarifying question. So if somebody comes back, we're not offering them the sick relief, right? That's the, that's the idea. So what if they get sick during that time they're on leave? Did then qualify they, for that? I think leave. they would move to sick leave. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That what I'm saying is just the person that's left comes back and we're saying, hey, you have to quarantine. You got to work. You can work from home. This is the stuff that you have to do. Yeah. You have the ability to work from home. And, you know, this is an, but if, yes, if somebody gets sick, I would imagine they go into that. Yeah. Okay. That was my only question. Yeah. But I do think uh, that, that there are some people that work in town hall that can't work from home. So I think they would be in the situation where, and maybe Kim can help me with this too, is there was that sick bank that was given by the federal government for up to two weeks worth of work, right? Like the 10 days, CFCR. and that they could pull from that. But, but that's if they were already gone now. But we're saying, hey, if you voluntarily go, can you say, no, we're not getting sick time? Well, that's the one thing that if you look at the handout Correct. that, um, yeah, the right. gave you all. That is the state of Massachusetts employees' current situation, and they are saying if you knowingly left, knowing which everybody that signs all over the highway, if you knowingly left, knowing you could be quarantined, then this is the consequence. You have to take two weeks off. You cannot apply for the Family First Coronavirus Act. You have to use any time you have banked or not get paid for that time period because it was your choice to go knowing you knew where you were going you knew the situation 
So they're saying the state of Massachusetts employees are not entitled to any extra benefit if you knowingly chose. And we do, just for the record, currently have two employees that are in hot spots. Okay. I just wanted to make a comment about the school part. The, you know, I understand about the entire summer, but now fall is coming. You know, the receiver is trying to figure out what's happening with the district here and how it's going to be played out with the three options. So, you know, if, if you have a teacher at the school that went somewhere because let's just say, what about death in the family or, or something like that happens, um, you know, who, I, I guess I would argue the point, who are we to say, you know, if you don't go back, I mean, you take that risk, but uh, to me it's kind of cruel, the fact that you have a loved one that may pass away and uh, in a hot spot and then you say, but you don't have any sick time, you, you, you don't get any, any, you don't get paid for. So I guess the, the, my, my concern is the schools, they don't even know what they're doing with their schedule yet. And w if we set a policy, that policy is gonna be in place. I know we can tweak it down the road, but you know, uh, we're setting it right now. And you know, what is it, three months down the road, two months, I, I don't know. I just want us to be very careful before setting a 14 day policy and, and everything's different. You know, everybody's situation is different. So I'd hate to see us blanket something and say, you know, that's it. You're out of luck or you're in luck or whatever it may be. Thank you. Um, I, I have a specific response to that. Um, do, does the town offer bereavement to its employees? So then they would qualify for bereavement then in that case. If it was an extreme circumstance in which you can't put that language. Right. Okay. I mean, right. I, I, yeah, I agree with Kazan. We have to be very careful when you make policy. You can make good policy, not bad policy. Well, the thing is, I'm not sure how much bereavement time you have. Yeah. If the health inspector says it's 14 day quarantine, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what their contract says about yeah, how many bereavement three days. days. Depends on but to Councilor Adams' point uh, of somebody traveling out, if we're serious about protecting our employees, the ones that are here that chose not to go to these hot spots, right. Whether someone passed away or not, this policy is pretty straightforward about protecting the existing employees. And unfortunately, I, I know what you're saying, but I'm still falling on the side of caution, saying, what about all the rest of the people instead of the one person that right. wanted to do this? Or had to do it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I agree, agree with Council Lazo. That, that's a very good point. So, you know, when I look at the 14 days, and that, the reason why I asked um, Andy about how long before the symptoms kind of rise, I was thinking in my head, you know, instead of the 14 days, maybe do four days. And then, and then you know, as far as going back to work and, and paying attention to that and, and self-reporting and all that kind of stuff, or even the department heads uh, take, you know, paying attention to that individual instead of straight 14 days. 14 days, can, you know, could be a long time for people. So I, all right. Go Council Steve's and then Council Dow. Yeah, you did have your hand up too. So uh, Council Steve, go ahead quick. And then, uh, I mean, I can kind of follow up on what you just said. Um, I know one of the things, some stuff I've been reading online about as the research develops on this, um, and Andy hinted, hinted on this earlier, about some of the issues of, sometimes people will have symptoms that don't actually mesh with this list of symptoms that, we're, that we look at as saying, okay, you have coronavirus, but the hard version of coronavirus. The immediately possible, you know, transmittable version. Um, but a lot of but a lot of people are showing symptoms after they get over it, where they're late, they were, they were their lingering symptoms. They may not be transmittable. You don't know with this particular illness. But they're showing like things like brain frog and all kinds of other stuff. They're quite frankly, the list of long-term symptoms it sounds an awful like the list of long-term symptoms of Lyme disease. Although obviously they're not related. They're not the same sort. They're not the same sort of pain. I'm not saying, but they're just similar symptoms. And um, so I guess one question. I, I, I think what we're what we're doing here makes sense for this. We'll probably want to look at it again um, in like a month's time before school really starts and sit down with the, the receiver so that we can figure out what exactly he's doing with his, with his reopening process and how we would tie this into that. Because I don't know if he's talking about doing his own kind of internal policy for this kind of thing. As, as as an employer himself, um, but obviously I think I, I would think that our policy would supersede that as the overarching employer. I don't know how that works, considering he's not working essentially for the state. So, 
but but they are our school system. So good, another, good, another good weird, legal way. Another weird situation. Yeah. Yes. All right, cancel that. Tote, we cannot wait another month. I agree. We have I somebody's agree. coming, and I we have to you and the rest. Yes. Second thing, we should put on a policy to do the test. Anybody leave, and he know, and they come back seven days or four days or ten days. Uh, was mentioned sometimes it's in your system but doesn't show up so you probably have the coronavirus but your system strong it doesn't show it and then when you go near somebody else you might give it them and now that person is weak it will affect them and affect everybody around them too so I think we should be to enforce the test on them anybody leave. can you mandate a test I don't think you can, can I think you can you can mm -hmm. yes. if you have symptoms yes you can <coughs> How about to show you have no coronavirus. You can't. No, you can't. Maybe. You Maybe. No, you can, you can put it on. So the question is, this is a pretty basic policy to put in place as a step one. I mean, does it address the immediacy and then something that needs to be worked on? Because again, this is changing every day. You see the numbers spiking up. You see all these hot stuff going on. I mean, is it a good first step at least to get something on the books, which I, I believe it is a good first step, but um, the recommendation of the health inspector at least is a step one. And then as we do more uh, research into legalities and all that, human resources to make sure, because I think those questions for the school district have to be answered to make sure of that. I mean, right now we're taking care of town employees and we send this to the school and say, hey, this is the the policy that was adopted by the council for all town employees, here you go. And then maybe we get some feedback from them as well as to what, uh, how it affects their employees because we also have to make sure we have collective bargaining agreements, employee relations, whatever we do, we want to make sure that before we go down the road of affecting any of those units, even though it's public health, we just want to make sure that we are on solid ground because we don't want um, right, 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 <laughs> or arbitration or anything like that. Something that we just did so haphazardly. Um, so this is, a, I think, a good first step to at least get a policy and say, hey, there it is. Um, you know, um, and, and continue to work. So Kim, you have to follow. Just um, to speak on what you just said, there is an exemption, just so you all know, by the governor for anybody who's considered a first responder. So this policy would not apply to police, fire, or DPW at this point for their bargaining units. It would just be the non-union town employees. There's already an exemption by the governor for them because they fall under a totally different category during this pandemic. Okay. <coughs> um, yeah, follow up with the question. Is it as we're at this point, if the policy mentions before re-entering the earthquakes after the 14-day period, okay, um, can we can we allow? Would it be wise to allow people to come back earlier, provided they can prove a negative test? Yeah. And how? How? I guess the question to follow up to that is how valid are the tests? What kind of false, false positive, and negative tests are we seeing? I don't. I, I don't see them enough. So. I know testing has been an issue across the country. I probably think it, do you have any information on that in? The, uh, I do not know the validity of the tests, but there has to be a measurement. Yeah. So I would argue that if somebody takes a test and comes out negative, I've got a more comfort level than somebody who didn't take the test at all. Yeah. Uh, the generally what I've seen in similar type restrictions is negative tests and no symptoms. Right. So if they have symptoms and they have a negative test, they have to write out the, the symptoms. That makes sense. Three days beyond the, la the last symptom. No symptoms. All right. Okay. Council Controller. Thank you, Mr. Chief. For you, I, I, I think I agree with several of the counselors this evening, though. We have to do something. This is the beginning. It's a policy. We have to protect protect the public, we have to protect our town employees. Just doing a little bit of research today online, uh, the governor is hesitant to make this mandatory because there's 
constitutional questions that have been raised. The governor also did institute, and, and it's a good idea, he, he's asking local governments to take a look at it, a travel authorization form. Uh, and it just lists your dates that your managers, supervisors, directors can give to you. Uh, this came out on the 7th of July. Just a data request, your travel request, your name, where you're traveling to, an itinerary. Um, just something else that I, I think it's worth looking at. Uh, and that was put out on the 7th of July by, by the governor's office. Um, barring everything that I've heard this evening, I think we're, 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 we're doing our due diligence by doing something tonight. Um, and that, and that's, that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do like what Councilor Dow brought up about the testing, that there's a capability of, of mandating a test when you return. And, I, and even Andy's point of going, I feel a little bit better because they didn't take the test. I know there's trial and error on this, but nothing we do tonight is going to, it's not going to be a catch-all here, you know? And so I just, again, I would rather prefer even just having a mandated test when they return monitored as well uh, by the department head or the individual because we're all grown adults here and, and they go from there and take steps but at least we're taking steps in the right direction to try to safeguard the employees of this town um, i just said i i looked out long and hard about this 14 days and i go wow you know this is this is two weeks and, and uh this harnoy brought up the fact that there are employees that do not cannot work from town. And, and then we have questions about the school system and how, how does that affect them? And so, you know, I, I'm just making my point clear that I do, I do. if we can make a test mandated, then I'd have a better feeling about somebody coming back to work, um, to work for the town and work for the people. Obviously, we don't want anybody getting sick in the state. So, all right, that's all I got right now. Cuts it out. I, I think if, uh you go to the doctor and you do the test, the doctor automatic will uh, give you a letter saying you have to quarantine for two days and we'll get tested. Uh, because they, they, they're not sure if you're gonna come back no, uh, positive or, or negative. So they, they want you to, so soon you go to the doctor automatic, they're gonna request you to go 14 days. And if we don't put a little bit strong policy and we're gonna leave it, okay, you go anywhere you want, so I can travel to any state hot like Florida for two days and come back. Now I'm getting 14 days free. If we, if we don't eliminate that, everybody's gonna do it. Why not? I go I go on a weekend, fly Saturday, Sunday, come back. Oh, I was in Florida. Now you have to give them uh, two weeks for 14 days for free. Hey, so they're all gonna do it. Now you you. So uh, we'll have to do something to eliminate that. Too. You know, you, you, you know where you're going, you know what you're getting to, so pay for it. Yeah. You know, pay the price. So. Go ahead, Councilman. Thank you. Um, uh, I have to push back on lowering the day count or eliminating it completely. 14 days is the medically established number. It's been put up by the CDC and put up by our state uh, board of health. Right? They, these are the numbers that have been stacked, backed up by medical science. When people's lives are on the line, that comes first, yeah. first and foremost. If an employee chooses to leave the state to a place that has this rate, that's on them. Because right now we have to worry about the entirety of the town. That employee made that choice. And it's horrible, and it stinks. Everyone's suffering right now, but I cannot choose to put public health second to that employee's wish to leave the state. This makes sense. This is what's backed by the medical science what we should be doing. And I thank you, um, Andy and the chair and everybody for bringing this to our attention because this needs to be done. You cannot risk everyone else's health for one or two or three employees that decide to leave. Okay. Um, I'll let uh, Council Daniel go first because we haven't heard from him. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to the health inspector. Um, is there any uh, guidelines in terms of how long it takes for the antibodies to manifest themselves uh, before the test comes back. In other words, the, how long, if I'm exposed now, how long will it take before the test can give a result that says that I am, in fact, uh, contagious? I was actually asking that question just the other day, and 
because there's a mandate to take, some people have a mandate to take the test. Right. And I said, well, how long after I'm exposed? And it, it's, it's up to two days. So you wouldn't take the test the day you go back. Okay. Um, since there's, there's some doubt in terms of how long it takes for the test to become valid, valid thank you. Um, I would suggest that I kind of agree with uh, uh, Councilor Ryan about uh, stretching out the time that a person is out to make sure that when you do take the test, the test is valid to begin with. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say coming back uh, your first day back from vacation, taking a test and saying, "Oh, great, everything is fine," because it's just, just not, not a good, a good policy, a good procedure. Um, I believe that also, just generally speaking, the general sentiment of the council, I agree with. I think we need to protect the entire uh, body that we govern. Um, and that if people need to, for whatever reason, people need to leave to go someplace that's a high contagious area, um, that's, in a, in, a, in a way, that's their business. You know, it's their business why they're going somewhere. But it's our business about how we have to handle the situation when the people return. And um, I'm one for error, erroring in favor of taking care of the people that are here that are working. Thank you. So I, I just want to pick up. Uh, I'm not sure what the guidelines is. I'm not quite aware that uh, family member may be out of state, coming back, has a medical procedure a week coming back. And so even though it's not the 14 days, but it's within the number of periods, that's a medical procedure. So it's not like the day they come back to take the COVID test, but they have to take the COVID test before they're gonna have that procedure within that 14 day period. So there must be something medical in there that they say, hey, the number of days, but I'm not the medical expert. But uh, I think on this policy, some of the things that are concerns, and I know Council Dallas saying, hey, somebody will just go and then get two weeks free. They would use their sick time back bank when they came back if they had to or accrue vacation. And if they don't have either, they get no pay, which I think is, is, is good language. So if you go and you can perform the functions of your job, do you take your sick time, right? Or your accrued vacation time, or you don't get paid. Is that what, how I'm understanding that, Kim? And it's policy. Correct. And, that's, and you can do that. Legally, we can do that, right? That policy was taken from mm -hmm. South Hadley so, and was written by their legal counsel. So I, I feel a little more comfortable that, hey, you, you either take your sick time, your accrued vacation time if you have it. If you don't have either, you get no pay. So, I mean, their sick time normally, a lot of these have sick time buybacks and stuff like that. So it is, you know, I'm not in favor of it, but <laughs> at least there's some protections in there. Yeah. So, Councilor Sean? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, maybe Andy can answer this. I'm not sure. Uh, if town employee comes returns from vacation from a hotspot, works from home, but requires, but has to, is the department head and has to sign a document, do we need the document outside for them to sign and they can drive to town hall? In the event, I heard Monday night that that our, our that someone is out of, you know, our managers out of state. So that if would, he's working that would have to from be home and has to sign a document. That would have to be an operational decision on um, how it can be done, and I'm sure that we could work at a method of accomplishing this without exposing a person who's bringing out the letter. Or um, they could, you know, a, a neighbor could possibly get the documents to them, put it in a mailbox um, where there's no contact. But that would have to be worked out. I don't know if that has an effect on the policy per se, no, it's just, or logistics. how we would have to work out logistics following the adoption if indeed the policy is adopted. Now, Andy, my understanding on the, the quarantine, from what I read too, was you're urged to quarantine and stay at home. But if you have to go out to get food, you're right. able to do that. Yeah. Or yes, to the doctor's game. Right. You know what I mean. Yeah. So it, it's it's. Limit your exposure as best you can yep. if you have to, yeah. uh, etc. Well, I mean, I think there's ways around trying to get a document signed for, for that period of time. If I may, I don't think it's too hard logistics. The definition of a close contact continues to be 
exposure within six feet for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. So the time it takes me to drop off a document and pick it up the next day wouldn't constitute close contact un under the current definition by the state. Okay. All right. I was also thinking that when we were when we were meeting remotely, um, when we needed to have things signed, like for example the, the warrant for the election, we just authorized the town clerk to do it in our behalf. And, they, and somebody like that could authorize, we could set up where they authorize somebody else to do it for them. Or maybe it would trickle up the chain of the command so that, say, if Heather were to be out, she could, she could set it up the chain so that Karen could sign it. Right. There's all this for the work around. Work around. Karen. If I could, we actually, Councilor Contrano, we, we did, we did uh, think about that and talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a department head who doesn't live that far from the from the town manager if he's if he's going to be working you know in the next couple of weeks so we could try to work something out but can I mention something else um, this policy wasn't in place when there were a couple of people that did go out of state to these hot spots so I don't know if they would have the opportunity to either decide to work remotely or possibly to just not work and take some of their sick time but I would just be concerned for next week. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be here. And if for some reason we don't have somebody in signing authority, I don't know if you just want to give that some thought since you're meeting tonight or not. Right. So I just wanted to mention that. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that I brought that up in the last meeting too. What are the law requirements as far as signing authority? So, uh, yeah, signing authority. I, I mean, Employee has the ability to work from residence. It has been for four months, mm -hmm. right? So therefore, it's just simply, hey, you have to work from home because of our concerns to protect our employees. Mm -hmm. There should be no reason outside of the fact that the employee requests sick time yeah. unless said employee is sick yeah. upon return. Because this policy doesn't say you can take sick time. It says if you have the ability to work from home, am I correct? And we deem it, which my recommendation was, I deem, you did it for four months, you can do it for two weeks, uh, work from home. Now, if employee gets sick, that's a whole other matter, and who do you appoint? That would have to be an emergency council meeting to say on Monday that says, hey, employee's sick, not allowed in town hall, what do we do? You know, and recommendation would probably be another department head, i.e., chief of police, which has been done in the past. And I've already broached the subject with said employee in case there was an emergency of that magnitude. So, but I don't think we're at that point because I think this policy pretty much covers it. Communicate the policy to that to those two employees that are out right now. Um, it says this is the policy, unfortunately. And listen, again, it's due to the fact that this situation has changed so rapidly and the numbers are climbing and we want to protect. We have no idea what your activities were, nor do I care what your activities were while you were on vacation because it was your time. Mm -hmm. However, you are coming back from a area that has potentially high numbers and our number one duty as a council is to protect our employees and our citizens. So therefore, while you may not be here to weigh in on this policy, that is the policy of this town council that will be implemented right now. That's just the way I look at it. I don't know mm -hmm. if anybody else has any thoughts on that, but that's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And it's a clear cut policy right now to institute, and then if we have to tweak it throughout the next couple of weeks as things even change even more, then we do some more research to make sure that we cover all our bases. You know, we communicate it to the school department, and the school department can look at it and say, hey, look, this is the policy of the town council that put in for town employees, right? Mm -hmm. Well, employees, it says employees. So, you know, Dr. Balak is the policy. You know, look at it. That's the policy of the employers. Mm -hmm. And you, yes, school employees are school employees. So, 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to make it clear. I'm just asking questions. It's almost yeah. a devil's advocate trying to figure out how we're going to do this. Remind you, science says it's two to 14 days. Right. It could be the 15th day. Could be. Right. So I just want to make it very clear that, you know, the, I guess the number one thing here is to protect the town employees, but don't rush through this um, and then find out later on we somehow may have overlooked quite a few things. Um, because you never know what happens tomorrow. You know, we could try to figure out all the answers tonight, and tomorrow another question comes up, and we go wow. So I just want to, you know, make it very clear that I, I'm, I got it. That we have to do something as a town council. I understand that there's uh, hot spots all over the place. I just want to be clear that we shouldn't rush through everything, um, just because you know science changes tomorrow. Because uh, by the way, you know something was supposed to last on a piece of paper for what? How many days? weeks and then come to find out maybe they don't do it we just don't know how this thing is going so uh, I guess my question is now we have to down, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, do you agree with this policy does it sound policy to put in place for the town employees for right now at this juncture I believe from a public health or a company health point of view this disease travels with people yes. and therefore restricting people's travel or restricting people who have traveled is good in a public health sense. That policy in its entirety, as I said, I felt it from another town. Uh, I can't speak to the legality of the FFCRA. Uh, it's a federal law. The state seems to say that they're going to skirt the federal law and not pay the people. They have to use their own time. It hasn't been challenged in court yet, so I, I won't speak to the substance of how we're going to pay these people while they're on leave. But the basis of the policy definitely protects the health of this corporation. Mm -hmm. Is that if the person knows he's not supposed to leave the state? I believe once this policy is made known to the employees, which I would assume that there is a means that that will happen for probably him, this is the new policy. Okay. My assumption is once we do that, we have notified them that we're not telling them they can't leave the state. I don't know if that's even legal for us to do. No, no. We're no. telling them if you do, this is the consequences. Okay. Mm -hmm. To go back on uh, Council Adam, uh, but we have to tonight put something. Uh, I don't know if you want to leave it open to some. Uh, no, I'm uh, no I, just because we have some thing coming soon. And if we, uh, I, I agree <coughs> with you where you come from regarding we have to be careful how we're going to put it, not to rush on it. But we have a. Uh, employee very soon that might affect other employees in the town so tonight we need to make a some kind of decision to protect uh, the employee is already working in the town, the town, the town. Uh, and then we can work on that in the future to work with the school department with all other department how they feel and what they like to add it or what we like to make sure is the correct way to move forward with it in the future on the I just wanted to say two things. One is that I, I completely agree with what Dave was saying earlier. I'm like kind of in the same position that he is. Is that I, I just wanted to raise issues that I think that this is good policy in general, at least for starters. Um, and one of the questions I have is how would this apply how would this apply to town boards and commissions that decide to meet in person? Because they are technically town employees by state definition. How, how would that be, and how would that be enforced? Because I mean, we definitely need to make sure that when we pass this, um, we need to communicate that to all chairmen on town boards and commissions as well. Yeah. Most of them are still meeting remotely, and that's just fine. Yeah. And they can still do that, and probably works just fine. Yeah. But if they decide to start meeting in person, like we are now, and the school meetings, how do we do that? Good question. I'm not the legal expert for the story of boards and committees, but I know personally what my personal responsibility will be. Yeah. I would think we would just send, make sure we so, send it to them all, and they they have to. Right. This is the policy of the town. Huh? Yeah. We would, you know, adapt it to all the boards and so all that. I think we'd actually go through the town so. manager's office since they're all appointed by the town manager, with a few exceptions. So. Okay. Just to care about what the council I completely understand, but we still have a little bit. Yeah, so, yeah, it's a world. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, I, no, I, I, but it's a great point to bring it up. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
So, so Council Ryan and Council Lazo. Oh, I was just, um, there's more discussion on the motion. Oh, okay. Council Lazo? I just want to say uh, this is a great starting point. If any of you have legal questions, all the questions that um, that need to be answered, I say we adopt this tonight. And if you want to knock on the tin, as we say, in government and work it to see, as the, the thing, the frustration that I share with, with Council Adams is this COVID-19 is changing mm. day on the national yeah. stage, okay? Don't wear a mask, wear a mask, six feet, this, that. Um, I think we all want to do the right thing. And I think adopting this is the first step to do the right thing. Now, we can always go back and amend this yes. as we work through it. And Andy, as the regulations change, and who knows what it's going to be next month. Uh, a vaccine might come out. We don't know. We have to deal with that. So I think what, what we have to do is adopt this policy. And then after that, just work hand in hand with our health inspector as it evolves to upgrade this as needed for Amen. Thank you. Council Adams? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, for, the mo for the motion to be made, or whoever's going to make the motion, if they, they didn't choose to do so, um, I would like to, if we're going to add something to this, I would like to say at a minimum to review this every four weeks. Oh, yeah. And that way it's in there. You know, if it, if, but if it has to come sooner, that's great. But at least it, it puts us on the forefront of, of our minds uh, every month. I'd recommend that. And lastly, with High risk areas, all right? I'm looking over what the governor's saying. What do we consider this? Do we talk about New England, Maine, and New York, New Jersey? Yeah. Are those not high risk? So, go ahead. If, yeah. if, if I may, the, um, I wrote this in accordance with what stands right now. Sure. However, I wrote it carefully. Uh, the definition of the high risk area is any location, whether national or international, that is under a state of Massachusetts advisory to quarantine. So if the state DPH decides all of a sudden that New York is, is spiking or that Maine is spiking and they're out, then Maine becomes the, the, the high risk area. The reason I wrote it this way is because it's right. dynamic with the situation. Mm -hmm. If all of a sudden he says Pennsylvania is fine, well then it automatically becomes fine. So because back. Okay, no, thank you. Thank you, great answer, thank you. Good job. Did anybody else have any other comments? Oh, Kim had comments. Okay. I'd just like to make one suggestion to the um, sixth item where we're talking about use of leave. Possibility of using some of the language from the state where it does say, the first bullet point, that neither the FFCRA two weeks of emergency paid sick leave nor the state's two weeks of paid sick leave is provided for essential workers who are exempt from the FFCRA are available for quarantine that results in voluntarily going out of state. I think some of that oh, may that need sense. to be incorporated so that it's very black and white that you cannot use any of these fail-safe measures to cover this time. Okay. So that, it, you know, our policy does say that you have to use your own time, but maybe instituting some of that language from that first bullet point would make it more fail-safe. So where is that going? Because we're going to adopt this this evening. It would be in that use of leave at the end. You could add it at the end, or just not in, not use the part that says. Um, Mr. Chairman, yes. can we get a vote? At least get this policy on the floor, then amend. Well, we don't really, really have any. Right. Right. Yeah, we have a discussion. Right. All right. So you want to? Let's take a motion to adopt. The stay-at-home policy for employees who return from travel to a location that poses a high risk of COVID-19 infection. So moved. Second. All right. Discussion. So now, <laughs> um, now we're looking at the policy itself. So, yeah. Our health director is looking at it for first. <laughs> Could we add a number seven and put it in there? Or just make a paragraph. Two. We're saying Chapter six. 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 For the emergency case. I would amend it. I, I would argue that the language. No, I would. I would say. I would say at this point, let's adopt this policy and then take a look at this voluntarily thing. Let's just make it clear that look, uh, employees, this is the policy in place. You know what the policy is. Um, and uh, 
uh, come back and revisit that because I would want to get a legal opinion on make sure that we're tight on that language that while well, the state adopted it, town, we just want to make sure that we adopt it clean and make sure this is pretty clear right now that says you're gone and make it clear to employees that yeah. any abuse of this by voluntarily going out of town will be reviewed. And I will add too to Councilor Catrona's point about the form that is used. We do currently have a leave request form and it asks, asks you know, we're, you know, what are you doing? What kind of time are you taking on? And there is a section on there that says the reason for your leave. So we could also add to employees when you fill out that form and you say you're taking vacation, you need to also fill in if you're going anywhere beyond the scope of what the governor has said is okay or not okay. And has the COVID-19 policy. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so that can be added as yeah. more information that we garner from those forms. Employees should really have some personal responsibility to know what they're doing with the and boards and commissions. Like you know what the new you know, research to make sure that you're doing right. Okay, a quick, quick question. Um, what it looks like to be to also just sort of line in here about who, who do we want this to be enforced by? Do we want it to be enforced by Kim or Andy or anything else? Jack about this a little while ago, but it should be in this. It should be in the That's the only resources. Yeah. I agree. She's going to know your vacation. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, I would say human resources, but I think human resources would work hand in hand with Andy on the issue, anyways. And we're going to be reviewing it um, on the enforcement front if it's in the front office and HR takes care of it. That would be the best thing. So I, I would recommend the language just at the bottom as like an asterisk. This order to be enforced by the Department of Human Resources. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Any further discussion on the amendment? So I would, I would propose the language of the amendment would be a section seven enforcement section. The authority to enforce this policy shall lie with the Human Resources Department of the Town of Southbridge. Unexpected sick day. That form does have to be filled out. The employee signs it, the department head signs it, and then they all come upstairs to the town manager's office to be signed. And there is a line on that form if you say you're taking vacation, personal, whatever, the reason for that request. So, what we would be asking employees under these circumstances, knowing that this policy exists, that they would have to be forthcoming to say, I'm taking a vacation to Florida, I'm taking a vacation to Maine. We would be asking them to provide us with that information. We don't need to know any more than that, but we need to make sure everybody's on the same page, that everybody's being open and honest about where they're traveling so that we can continue to keep everybody safe. Any further discussion? Roll call. Yes. Councilor Patrona? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Dowd? Yes. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Councilor Ryan? Yes. Councilor Steve? Yes. Councilor Allen? Yes. That's it, right? That's it. Motion Council to Allen? I'd like to uh, make a motion to waive the rules to add an agenda item. Agenda item 4A. Would you like me to recite the... Yeah, the agenda. Okay. 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 Motion would be freeze all hiring in the town of Southbridge to September 14th, which will, which means the town manager appointee would be uh, the new town manager to be on duty. So there's a motion to suspend the rules and add agenda 4A. Point of order. Uh, second. Second. Point of order. Yeah. Councils of the whole can only take up one agenda item and one agenda item only. <laughs> so I guess just as a further discussion, I think we had this conversation. Um, I think we're all set on that. Okay. So, all right. The motion to adjourn. So no. Second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. I mean roll call. Oh, that's right. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Dow? Yes. Councilor Joanne? Yes. Councilor Lago? Yes. Councilor Marquette? Yes. Councilor Ryan? Yes. Councilor Steve? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. And Councilor Yes. Yeah, technically we're all here, but nice to get an honorable call, I guess.